Hey, happy Tuesday, July 27th. It's your boy Matty D. Uh, welcome back to Masses United. We're taking a look at one news story from the day and how to make it actionable. I think this is maybe the top on a lot of people's minds. Premier Doug Ford, who oversaw the longest lockdown in North America, is urging people to get back to work after hearing from small business owners who are struggling with the labor shortage. And there's a lot to unpack here. It is so frustrating and it's there's a lot of Oh, I'm so angry reading this, uh, but let's take a look at some of the top comments. Uh, weird how nobody wants to work in an environment that puts them at a high risk for catching a debilitating illness with maskless customers verbally abusing them for a minimum wage. Hot tip, pay a living wage, require masks, treat people well, and give them paid sick leave. Uh, pro tip, if you're struggling to hire, you're not an attractive employee to work for. Uh, it keeps on going. There's a lot of pushback to this uh, this tweet, rightfully so. I think the clear thing is, is like, let's talk about living wages. <laughs> let's like, we've been fighting for $15 an hour as a minimum wage for far too long. It's now maybe 25 or even $30 to have a, a survival type level income. Uh, originally, the intention of a minimum wage was for a single earner to be able to afford to buy housing, uh, to live comfortably with food and supplies and have some extra spending money and saving money. So you're still contributing to the local economy. Uh, it is since seeing the economy be taken over by the one percent uh the working class has been decimated and we're just struggling to survive amid inflation and skyrocketing housing prices uh and on top of that they're now asking us to go out and die in the middle of a pandemic to serve the most ungrateful and ignorant people also we can make billionaires richer it is an amazing time to be alive uh, i i don't even know where to begin with this i think while i kind of try to gather my thoughts uh, let's just go and take a look at uh, doug ford's uh, announcement on this folks there's a, i'll tell you let, let me uh, mention something about the economy i've been speaking to small medium large restaurant owners and mayor i'm sure you're hearing the same thing uh, everything from a donut shop folks we need to get back to work uh, they, they cannot keep their, their restaurants open because people just aren't coming back. So we need to get back working and, uh, you know, creating opportunities and, and prosperity for, for everyone. Thank you, Mike. Sorry. Prosperity for everyone. Like, they don't give a shit. And we all know that. Uh, we've seen from on the East Coast with Doug Ford. Uh, he's been pimping uh, the uh, uh, Tim Hortons and uh, Mega billion mega corporations the chains uh tim hortons is not a canadian company it has been for some time it's owned by some big brazilian conglomerate that owns uh burger king and a bunch of others uh we've seen the death of mom and pop shots largely because of people like doug ford and on the left uh, on the west coast uh even leftist era <laughs> leftist governments like uh the john horgan's bc ndp they've all specifically engineered the collapse of small businesses uh we've seen the the lockdowns which have been a good thing and should have happened have been conducted so incredibly poorly they haven't communicated with these mom and pop shops uh, as an example these these small restaurants that are barely struggling to get by they need to have their supply orders in far in advance so they'll get in a lot of product to keep their like storage full so they're ready to serve customers uh and then the lockdowns would hit them with no notice so now they've got all these perishable items they've invested all this money into it and they gone under um, they don't give a fuck about the small businesses the the large businesses the chains they don't care about all of this they're still making a ton of money off of the very precarious uh food delivery apps and whatnot that are, are taking a large chunk of their revenue um it's a really disgusting thing to see uh this man come out and say that they will care about prosperity for all uh, in addition to seeing the one percent benefit so so deeply um just in general let's look at the specifics canadian billionaires uh, wealth has skyrocketed amid the pandemic. We take a look at the numbers. One year, one year, this is a April 14th, 2021. One year later, Canadian billionaire wealth up by $78 billion. This is almost exclusively because all the small businesses have been completely killed and gutted while all the big businesses are taking over. In addition to that, taking your my little tax dollars and using it uh, to prop up their fortunes even more and to pay out dividends and whatnot. Uh, we know that 5.5 million Canadian workers lost their jobs or had more than half of their hours cut at the pandemic's peak. Uh, we know from current job data that the people who are getting jobs back are either getting them as part-time jobs or low-wage jobs. These are not well-paying jobs. These are not union jobs. These are often not permanent jobs. It is largely people coming in and doing the gig work, the precarious work. Uh, these are not decent jobs that are going to support a long-term economy. 
Uh, it's when you look at where the money's going, right? David Thompson and family, the richest man already in Canada, his wealth went up by $14.4 billion. Nobody needs $1 billion. Never mind the 14 he gained over the last year. Never mind the estimated $54 billion he has now. And this is as of April. I'm sure that he's gained many billion more since then. He does not need that money. It is killing people. Galen Weston and his family, the, the superstore chain and whatnot, their wealth has gone up $4.5 billion while they deny workers a, a living wage and while the people that work for them are exposed consistently uh, to those who are some of the most violent and ignorant in the planet, uh, propagating uh, conspiracies while literally spreading a deadly plague. Uh, it is not a good time. It is not okay. And we need to fight back. And one thing we've seen is a lot of people are fighting back by walking off the job site. Um, and I totally respect and appreciate these stories we're seeing about the labor shortages where people are saying not only will they not work, but those who are engaged in precarious employment are literally just vacating. We've seen the stories of Burger King, people walking out, Denny's people walking out saying, I'm just not going to put up with this danger anymore. When it doesn't enrich my life, it only makes the 1% richer. A thousand percent respect that. As a union guy, I would love to see if that was done coordinated with labor, coordinated with unions, because we can back you. We can make sure that your demands are heard maybe louder because you've got a, a solid network behind you and it's clear it's part of a movement with clear demands. But people have lost trust in labor, and I respect that, and I, I agree. I also lost a lot of trust. I think we'll take a look here. Here's Hassan Youssef with uh, Justin Trudeau. He's the uh, Canadian Labor Congress uh, former president who's now a liberal senator. Uh, he's, sorry, unofficial liberal senator. He has done so much to gut the, liberal, the, the labor movement. Uh, it is 100% a class traitor. I uh, despise this man, and he will face justice someday. Uh, but labor has stopped fighting for people, and people have stopped working together. And it's been uh, one of the reasons that we've been so so easily gutted by the billionaires and the, the 1%. And I think for us to, to take a look at what's happening out there as people kind of are doing an informal general strike and saying, we're not going to work. Um, there's a lot that we can do to act in solidarity. And I think the two easiest things to do uh, would probably be work slowdown and then working with, and I hate to say it, and I hate to say it, working with the NDP to really start focusing on taxing some of these motherfuckers because they're just bleeding us dry. Um, so just quickly taking a look uh, at the work slowdown idea. Uh, so force majeure, it's a clause that you see in a lot of, uh, of business contracts. Essentially, uh, it's a clause that's included to remove liability for natural and unavoidable catastrophes that interrupt the expected course of events and prevent participants from fulfilling obligations. This is a very serious contract. The things it has in here, it's always like the top of the line, things that you should 100% be scared of and like personally give me nightmares, right? It's, it's like be, uh, if there's an earthquake, if there's a war, if there's a terrorist attack, uh, floods, severe weather events such as hurricanes, epidemics, pandemics, quarantines, uh, yeah, war, hostilities, terrorist acts, uh, terrorist acts, civil unrest, government actions, including expropriation, uh, embargoes. Uh, it's it keeps on going. And then, of course, we have here labor activities, including strikes and work slowdowns. And the fact that work slowdowns is always included in these clauses. And we talk about it so little, I think is a really important thing to kind of try to shift our narrative to make it more top of mind. And so this is just a general idea. I think at some point, maybe we should have a conversation about what our weapons are and how we should use them as a working class. But I would like to just kind of raise the idea that we should consider work slowdowns. And it doesn't have to be you just slow down and do nothing at work, especially in 2021, when all of our labor is monitored so closely, especially if you're a remote worker, like, Someone like myself, every single thing I do is monitored and they, they quantify all of it. And at the end of the month, I get a, a productivity report and sit down with management and they go over every single little detail. So be mindful of your work environment before you consider doing these things. But a work slowdown can be very effective because A, they don't know where it's coming from. So it could be for any particular reason. So there's a little bit of inherent safety in that as opposed to just stopping your work. Uh, and at the same time, you don't have to just consistently or permanently do the slowdown. Sometimes it will be a, a, a target slowdown of maybe just Fridays. Maybe it will be something like uh, no overtime for a month or two. There's a variety of different ways that you can impose a work slowdown. Um, and that's something that we should consider more as a society is we don't have to go straight to the general strike, which we should 100% do without question. We don't have the capacity for just yet. And the more we talk about it and fail to deliver, the more we're 
taking out the the power and the violence behind that word and how important and how strong of a tactic it can be uh, so I strongly dismiss and and uh, uh, cast some shade and hate on those who are calling for general strikes without doing so alongside organized labor because they're just making it more difficult for you and I to do these general strikes in the future uh, but I would say take a look at work slowdown and talk to people at your work and see who's already frustrated, who's already agitated. And those people kind of pitch, if you trust them, the idea of working slow. If you kind of say, hey, yo, I, I'm just tired of this and I wish I could just walk off the job in solidarity with these other people. Maybe you want to start with a work slowdown. Moving on to our next point here, uh, I think that we could also support the NDP a little bit more. And I hate politics. I hate electoral politics. I, I, I'm not a fan of the NDP, but I will say uh, they do seem to be the only ones who want to go after the 1%. And provincially, oh, they're terrible. The BC NDP just, it, it makes me ill even talking about them. Uh, but Jagmeet Singh has done a really good job of staying on message. And there's a recent report here, Parliamentary Budget Officer estimated that a one-time tax of 3% and 5% on Canadians with net worth over 10 million and 20 million respectively would yield between 44 billion and 61 billion. Jagmeet seems like, yo, that's cool, but we're gonna make it a, an annual tax. It's not a one-time tax. And I think that sends a really powerful message that the working class is rising up. And I think that it warrants uh, supporting the NDP. Um, I think it, always be mindful of the candidate in your writing. Uh, the ones that I can say without doubt are good people and, and will help train you up and make you the strongest ally you can be for socialism and a coming revolution would be uh, Leah Gazon, Matthew Green and Avi Lewis. Uh, but just check out the ones in your area, see if it, they, their message resonates with you and if they are socialists and if they are, totally work with them. If they're not, maybe consider voting for them and volunteering for the three I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, I think that, that kind of makes it very clear. We've got one thing that we can do individually at the moment and we've got one thing we can kind of do collectively, which is work towards the NDP. And I think whenever we're talking about any type of labor action, it's always good to do it with others. So try to maybe reach out to unions if you aren't already in a unionized workspace if you are already unionized talk to your steward or people that you trust within the union see if there's already any existing momentum there uh, and then always feel free to reach out to me <laughs> reach out to the channel reach out to the comments uh we we're on canada left all the time so just leave comments canada left too uh, and we'll try to figure out how to get something going but uh yeah that was that was monday july 26 uh and uh I hope you have yourself a fantastic week. Yeah, it's a rough time, uh, but I think we're going to get better. I think things are going to be okay. We have to just rally together and keep building momentum uh, and doing that through love and solidarity. So with that in mind, I send you love and solidarity, comrade. Have yourself a fantastic week. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, peace. Marching across the fields where a million faces died.